as I was mentioning on, uh, on Slack before, today we would like to do to, to three things. The first one is uh, the exercise that we stopped to do, that, that we mentioned yesterday about uh, uh, human AI interaction and the vocal assistant. Uh, the second things is speaking a little bit of what happened next uh, for the labs, but also for the lecture in general, since the course is proceeding towards completion and also have a brief conversation with you about the exam, in particular, the written exam. So let's start from these last two things. And if you have questions on these two topics, please ask without any problem, either here in the chat or on Slack in the next uh, few days. So uh, th this is the schedule uh, that you, have, you, you know, uh, because you get material from here. And well, today we are here with this interacting with AI exercise. Um, and today is also my century is due hmm? to today, end of the day. So what, what will happen next? Tomorrow, we will have uh, a lab that is entitled Hi-Fi Prototype Implementation. Hmm? So the implementation of the high fidelity interactive prototype in code that you will uh, present uh, as part of the exam. And you, you, you can, can see that tomorrow we have the two slots on this uh, topic. And then the same lab will be repeated the 17th of December. And then again, the, the, the 14th of January. These are hours, all of these, and also partially the others, are hours uh, for in the lab where you can start working uh, on your prototype. So hour that we cut, let's say for you, uh, supervised, uh, let's say supervised work group. So work group uh, on Zoom in breakout rooms in which you can design, develop, test, ask question uh, to, to me and uh, Matteo that will be in, in the lab, in, in one of the lab uh, about implementation problems, about uh, choices, um, that you should, should make, things that you should, should implement or not, and so on. So this is time for you for working on your project in a supervised way. So we will not have a, a text of the lab for this laboratory. So for tomorrow, no text of the lab because it's just time for you for working and asking questions and possibly receiving questions and solving problems uh, that you may encounter from now on uh, up, up to the end of the course. And most of the lab from now on will be devoted to your hi-fi uh, prototype implementation with just two exceptions. The first exception is next week, because next week we would like to uh, use those hours also, not only for, first of all, for your prototype implementation, but also for uh, discussing with you about some example uh, of usage of mobile sensors that you need to incorporate in your prototype. We are preparing, and this is a preview, we are preparing samples on GitHub in our GitHub organization. These are private right now, but we will publish them as public repositories before uh, next week, before next Thursday. And these are sample of usage of specific sensors of, smart, of the smartphone. According to the map that, uh, I, I, I did uh, during the last uh, weeks. Hmm? So for instance, there is a project how to use the touch, long touch, swipe, and so on. Uh, uh, a sample for notification, one for GPS, vibration, a, a microphone, camera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So right now there are seven projects we are uh, working, uh, especially Matteo, but we are working on these to create all the sample for all your mm, sensors that you plan to use. It, so you, you can have a starting point for incorporating this feature in your prototype. Mm -hmm. And these are all JavaScript HTML uh, projects, so web technology only. Uh, these are simple examples that you have to personalize them according to your specific need in your specific project, but at least is a starting point. Mm -hmm. So next week, we would like to use the lab hours to discuss with you, to show you uh, these examples, some of these examples, 
uh, maybe some of them are some extra requirements. So for instance, for the microphone, for voice recognition and for the vibration, I think, uh, you need to have a public address on the internet uh, connected to your web service uh, that is running on your computer. And uh, uh, for this, you can use, for instance, software like ng-rock that creates, it's a free software that creates a tunnel between your service running on your computer and a public address uh, on the web. So all, all these things that could be useful for your implementation. And this is next week. Uh, then we have another supervised work group. And then in January, we will have a lab devoted to usability testing uh, because the, for milestone four, for the, the final, so for, for the exam, for the oral exam, the presentation of the project, you will also have to conduct the usability testing. And so that lab is for uh, helping you in uh, um, writing the protocol, the script, the procedure that you need to follow, that you will follow for conducting the usability evaluation of your final prototype. And for this lab, you will have a text and the template for M4. But this is something that will happen in January. And then the next lab will be again, high five prototype implementation. And we plan to use the last hour, the second slot of the lab hours, the very last hours of the course to have a simulation of the written exam. So we are going to open a virtual classroom. You are going to join the virtual classroom. We will give you a fake exam, but realistic, not, not with the real question uh, of, the, of, the first, uh, of the first round, but with realistic question. And we will have a simulation of the written exam so that you can also understand uh, how long the exam is, how, how much you have to write, um, and which, which kind of question there are, and, and so on. This is for what concern uh, laboratories and the written exam simulation. Uh, from next week, so next week we have no class on, on Tuesday uh, because the 7th, the 8th of December is holiday uh, for Politecnico. The, the 8th of December is actual, actually an holiday in Italy, but the 7th of December is just an extra day that the Politecnico is uh, closed and uh, all the teaching activity are uh, suspended. So we have no classes. We will have a class on Wednesday when, when, when we will start speaking about evaluation, usability testing before, uh, also an exercise for planning uh, the usability testing. So to, how to create, we will create one of these protocol that you are going to use in, in the lab in January. And then we will speak about the control experiment as another kind of user evaluation. And also we will have a control, an exercise about the control experiment that could be a possible also question for the exam. So this is more or less the picture uh, about labs and what happened next. Uh, I would like to just point you to this other link here. It is called development resources that it's here since the beginning, more or less, uh, in which you have some link to the uh, APIs and documentation for uh, the same sensor that we are going to uh, show you in these repositories on GitHub. So these are extra material if needed. And here, for instance, there is some software that you can uh, find useful, including this NGROC, that is this software for creating a free tunnel between your local host uh, port uh, one, two, three, uh, four, uh, and uh, a, public, uh, a public address like uh, something 345.ngrock.io. Uh, running on the port 8080, for instance. So we have uh, here, you can find some additional resources. And in the exam lab, if you didn't notice, uh, in addition to the milestone, the templates and so on, you have also some sample of the written exam, uh, some sample exam question here from last year. Uh, the exam simulation that we did last year with a possible solution. Uh, the, written, uh, the two, two written exam from last year. So the course is new. We don't have a long history of uh, uh, samples, uh, but we, the, the course started last year. So we just have samples from last year, essentially. But here you can find some sample question uh, that are a lot of question. An, an exam has way less question than this, but uh, typical question uh, that may appear and uh, similarly, 
uh, you can find, for instance, the exam simulation of last year or the Britain exam of the first or second round in the winter. And we will add here the exam simulation that we are going to do this year with possible solution. So for instance, let's open on this. Um, so for instance, the, the Britain exam, just to remind you, is close, close book. So no notes, no material allowed. It's 60 minutes long. It will be done in a virtual classroom. So no proctoring system, just webcams and people writing on paper. And then you submit the PDF of the paper of the of your exam and you will have uh, four questions uh, the first one let's say one is typically an exercise a, a bigger let's say exercise and it, it counts for more points a little bit more points than the others and so for instance here is to draw a quality framework prototype according to this description and this is one possible solution uh, for getting the maximum point of this. And then the other question like, uh, like this is not something that we did, but for instance, described not yet, we, we are going to do this in a few in the next week. But for instance, here describe the main differences, the main differences between interviews and surveys. Mm -hmm. So question like this, here you have uh, 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 some, some example. Uh, Question, we can draw at the exam, yes, obviously yes. The, it, everything will be on paper. So this is obviously done uh, digitally just for a better presentation to you. But if you have to draw something, you can draw with pencil or pen on a piece of paper. So the exam works in this way. We are going to give you the, a text of the exam without the solution, obviously. So something like this, something like this, one page. Uh, you can, uh, we will give you something like five, 10 minutes to print this page if you want. Then we are, we, we will be all in a virtual classroom. Um, you will open your, turn on your camera uh, and microphone and put your camera in a way that we can see both you and the table or at least a portion of you and, ta and the table and then you can start the exam and we will, and either me or, or Professor Korn or both of us, we will supervise the exam like humans so without uh, automatic uh, um, techniques, so let's say. So we will look at the cameras of you and what you are doing and listen what you are saying. And we will see everybody and listen to everybody, uh, hear everybody, but you will not see each other and hear each other on the virtual classroom. And then at the end of the exam, you have to uh, scan or make a photos of your written exam, either with the, the Polytechnic app or with Dropbox or with whatever you want and upload the PDF or the pages of the exam on the Portale della Didattica in the Elaborati section. At that point, we will briefly check that everything is there, is readable. And then if everything is there, is readable, you can leave the exam session, otherwise you have to retake another photo and re-upload again if something is not readable. Uh, and so we cannot correct the grade the exam, uh, the exam. And then after the exam, we will grade everything and we will give you uh, the mark of your exams. So this is the written exam in uh, briefly and it will be online obviously for January at least, but in theory, it will be online. And, but we will give you more precise message on Slack about the exam, the exact procedure as more close to the exam date. Other question about the exam or what I've said before, otherwise we will move to the exercise. No, we won't use respondus. We will just use cameras and humans looking at other humans. We won't use any of these kind of technology. We will use for the, the, the Britain exam, a virtual classroom, cameras, on, camera, cameras on, and the teacher that will look at you like in the, the real classroom. 
And for the oral exam, we will do the same, but obviously it's, it's easier because it's oral. And I don't know if you uh, already know, but I see on the Portale della Didattica the dates of the next two exam. Do you know those dates? I don't know if they are still temporary or not. Anyway, uh, the first session should be January 28th at 11 in the morning. And the, sec the, se the second session for the exam of HCI should be February 16 at 11 a.m. So these are, I, I don't know if these are temporary or they can change or not, but these, these are the two dates for, that now appears on the Portal della Didattica for the Britain exam. 28th of January and 16th of February up to now. And we will add other two dates for the, on the teaching portal. We will ask to add other two dates on the teaching portal for uh, the oral presentation. So you, we, you need to enroll to the Britain exam if you want to, to, to have a seat at the Britain exam. And then you have to enroll as a group for the oral presentation on the teaching portal as soon as all these four dated, dates will appear. Any question, comments, protest? The oral presentation, uh, it depends. The, oral, so the question is the oral presentation will be one week before the written exam, if I remember right, uh, it depends. It, Typically, we are trying to do one week before or one week after, um, so that you have a bit of time to uh, to, to, to prepare for, for both you, if you want. What is one week before the oral exam is the, the deadline for updating all the milestone and for delivering milestone number four. So all the deadlines, all the milestone, and including milestone number four, we needs to be ready on your uh, project or uh, your GitHub project one week, seven days before the oral exam, not the, the, the written exam. So about the text uh, of the written exam, the question is how long before the test start we'll have to print the text. They don't have a printer here. Uh, so we, we have, you have two options. Uh, so we typically say that the, the test of the exam will be given uh, when the exam start, uh, not before. Um, and then last year we gave 10 minutes to print everything. Also going in another room to print, but uh, to print. If you don't have a printer, you can keep the, the monitor, you can keep the text on the monitor of your computer since you have a webcam turn on and Chrome or whatever, yeah, Chrome probably uh, turn on for the virtual classroom. So uh, you can keep the test on the, the text on the screen. If you cannot print or if you not prefer not to print, it's just an option. You can either print or keep it on a screen. Uh, it's possible that some topics from a last year test were covered this year. For example, I don't remember chi square test. Um, so it's possible that some topic are not covered. Uh, so we, we, do, we make some changes. So something that last year we did, we didn't, we, we are not going to do this this year and vice versa. Uh, but for instance, in particular, the chi square test is something that we are going to do in as part of the controlled experiment. So the chi square test, uh, is something that will happen in January. And so that's why you don't remember the chi square test. You don't know what is counterbalancing because we are not yet uh, spoken about those, those things. So there are some topic that, um, 
most of the topic are, are the same. So for instance, uh, main violation of Nielsen usability heuristic is something that you know, uh, what, uh, propose a wireframe to better design these. Similarly, list the main methods for knowing you, your user. Same uh, advantages and disadvantages um, of paper prototype, uh, same user observation, consistency in design principle, recognition and recalls in usability heuristic. Uh, this, the SUS questionnaire, is something that we are going to do in the next week. So, this is something that you we, we, we are going to do this, but not we, we didn't uh, up to now. Um, it's the oral presentation, it's only about the project. In the oral presentation, you will showcase your prototype and we will make some question about your prototype and we will evaluate your milestone before the oral presentation. So when you, we, you start the oral presentation, you have to assume that we already know everything, we read everything that you put in your milestone uh, and also including also M4 and you have to showcase your prototype and we will uh, we can ask any question about your prototype or about the milestones not anything else uh, anything related to theory theory is in the written exam uh, just to give you uh, describe the role of null hypothesis is something that we are going to do Everything else here is in the second exam simulation is done. This is something that you, you know. Uh, Counterbalancing is something that we are going to do. Uh, eye tracking, you, we already spoke about that. Interviews and surveys, the same. And uh, the, this one is part of the chi square test, is part of the uh, control experiment. The storyboard is already done, the risk evaluation is done. And, uh, and this is something that we are, we didn't, we, we did last, last year, but we, we are not going to do this year. So this uh, list of categories in which contemporary voice user interface can be split uh, is something that is not pertinent to this year. If you want to make changes to the previous milestone, uh, you can, we are going to reevaluate all the milestone uh, before the oral exam, so before the project presentation, and all the milestones should be ready on GitHub seven days before each oral exam. So if you enroll in a specific date for an oral exam, seven days before all the milestone milestones should be ready, updated because we are going to evaluate those. And we will uh, publish the exact date. So there is no, no, no issue with, with this, our, uh, we, which are seven days before. We will publish the exact uh, date as soon as we have the, the date of the, of the oral presentation. And then the written exam counts for I don't remember uh, a, a percentage of the final grade and the uh, uh, it's written here. Uh, the written text counts for forty percent of the final grade, minimum seven points. You you need to take at least seven point out of thirteen for pass the written exam. Otherwise, you failed the written exam and you can take it another time. And the evaluation of the project instead accounts for 60%, uh, 20 points. It includes all the milestone and the source code of your prototype and the demonstration of your prototype that you are going to do during the, um, the exam. And both parts must be passed in the same academic year in any order. So you can take in January, the, the, the oral exam and the written exam in July or vice versa, whatever you want, just in the same academic year. In the next academic year, if you have a written exam, you lose only the written exam, you lose the, mark, the grade that you have to retake the exam. Uh, oral exam are public or private for each individual. Uh, I don't remember, so typically are public. So in the real in the real world, they, they will be public. We will be in a room and we will have 
everything, to all, all, everybody together, and we will call one group per time. Uh, I think that last year, uh, when we did uh, the, uh, the oral exam remotely, uh, we had a, a link to a virtual classroom to Zoom, I don't remember, probably to Zoom, uh, and the groups connect in that link and probably also the group that is the next group connect a little bit before so some people can can listen but all the exams in public university in Italy should be public so if you want to to have a look uh, of another exam another group you you are allowed to it's not something secret especially oral exam. Written exam, it's more difficult to observe what they are writing. Okay, so if there are no other questions, we can proceed with the exercise. I'm just waiting if you have any other question, uh, but in the meantime, I'm opening things. Okay, so just a briefly recap of what happened yesterday. So yesterday we had a look at this, we had a brief introduction of why it's important and what is relevant uh, about interacting with the system, a user interface that includes some AI components. And we end up with this set of 18 guidelines for human AI interaction created by Microsoft Research, analyzing more than 20 years of research and uh, guidelines and uh, guidebooks and whatever about this topic. And we, we have said that these guidelines are uh, split in four phases. What happened initially, when you have a look at the, the interactive system with AI, what happened during the interaction with the system or with this application, what happens when something is wrong, so error recovering uh, and so on, and what happens over time, since most of the time AI technology is something that evolve a model over time. So a change made today may have an impact in three weeks or in two months or something like that. And these uh, guidelines as a website that I open, uh, which more, with, more, with more details. And so you have some, some blog posts, but you also have the, the original paper, these, these guidelines were proposed in the ACM CHI 20, 2019 conference. It is the top conference of human computer interaction uh, for, for research. And it's quite huge as a conference. It has thousands of people and also companies like Microsoft, like Google, Facebook join the conference either for uh, research purpose or for recruiting people, students, uh, PhD students typically, uh, students or collaboration to start collaboration with the industry and so on. And so they published these guidelines in a CHI 2019 paper um, that also won a, a, a prize as one of the best paper, let's say, uh, of the conference. Um, but then there is a picture, the poster, and also there is an interactive card, uh, an interactive demo, in which you can choose the card from the deck here. So for instance, this one, and you have the card and some example in practice. Uh, I, I took some screenshot from, from a year for, for the slides. Uh, so for instance, in the slides, there is the example number two, this one. This one is, is in the slide. So you can have some example of how make clear how well the system can do what you can do, can be applied on different uh, systems. So for instance, uh, on Outlook web. So this is Microsoft. So most of the example are Microsoft related. Uh, example of how the guideline is 
implemented, is respected, so not violated. So how the outer web explain the filtering into focus and other uh, for making clear how the system work. Then there is this example of a music recommendation that we have seen yesterday. And also uh, another example in practice about the preview, the ideas preview in office, um, in, in all the suites of uh, office suites. So in Word, if you create a file that's called the curriculum vitae, it opens up tab here. Let's say, do you want some suggestion for creating a better curriculum or something like that? And you can see yes, no, select various options. So this is uh, um, a feature that is powered by artificial intelligence and that is included in the device in the in the, in the office suite. And it makes clear in this case how well the system can do and what it can do. And, and this applies for all, all of them. So let, let's have a look just uh, at the 18 guidelines since we are going to, to use that, uh, to use those for evaluating the Amazon Echo that we uh, tested yesterday. So uh, the, fir the first two guidelines are about uh, the initial phase of usage. And let's take this from the documentation. The, the term it's the same, but it's just another way of, okay. The first guideline say, make clear what the system can do. And this is a subtitle that describes the guidelines. And here you have some example, uh, some possible feature to respect or violate these guidelines. So for make clear what the system can do, you should, uh, so for respecting these, uh, this guideline, you have to ensure the user are aware of the full breadth of functionality of the application. If there is search and filtering, ensure that all the search possibility are enumerated. Clarify how the input influence the results. Ensure that user are made aware of any data that is collected, tracked, or monitored. And it's easy to them to find how the data is collected, whether via sensor, user enter data, or other sources. If the product made recommendation, like in the music case, ensure that the user can determine what information is used to derive a recommendation. So make clear what the system can do. Create the right expectation. Help the, the user form the proper mental model. And here, things not to do. Create opaque functionality that the user cannot interpret. Like aggregating uh, news from sources that nobody know. Uh, or associating images in a photo uh, in some categories, but without providing any suggestion, any idea which are these categories. Or having a prompt to say what, what you would like to do without any guidance to actually tell the, the user what are the possible options for answering this question. Anything we, we have seen yesterday with Amazon, uh, uh, with uh, the, the Amazon Echo that you cannot ask everything. You can ask something and, and for instance, what's on TV uh, tonight, but you cannot ask what's on TV tomorrow. And so the system should provide some way for making clear what he can do. So this is the first, uh, the first guide that make clear what the system can do. And the second in the initial phase is make clear how well the system can do what he can do. So not only, what can do, what the system can do and what cannot, but also how well it can do that and how well it cannot. So it's probably spam or it's not probably spam. Is the music that you surely will love or it's the music that maybe perhaps in some cases you may love or not. So this is more language again, helping the, the user creating the right mental model, how the system will behave not only what is possible to say or it's possible to derive from the system, but also how well the response is, the, the activity that the system is providing help the user, which is accuracy, let's say, uh, of, these, of, of the results. And this is just two things about initially, make clear what the system can do and how well it do the things that it can do. Uh, 
Uh, oh, and a question. Are those principles also expressed in some law, for example, the European legislation? Uh, so this is a good question. So these are guidelines, not principle. Uh, so probably not exactly, but uh, uh, I'm not totally sure. Uh, but I, I, it seemed to me to remember when I, we, uh, when I studied, let's say the G GPDR, the privacy law, at the European Union, the sum of these concept uh, make clear which information you are asking to the user or which information you are providing to the user or how long you store data and so on are also uh, regulated in uh, the, the GPDR uh, that is a uh, European law and nation that doesn't need to uh, adopt that to, to create a specific law for implementing that but uh, use directly the European law. Uh, but I, I'm not aware of any of this, uh, any law for human AI interaction, uh, but for, is, for instance, privacy and uh, user data, uh, some of these things are obviously uh, also reporting uh, nor, nor, nor made in, in some area of the world. So this is initially, and then during interaction, we have four different cards. Uh, Uh, the first one say time services based on context. So time when to act or interrupt based on the user current task and environment. Uh, so during interaction, dynamically update information in the application as the context change. Update the time to a destination in a navigation application to use GPS. Uh, once the user is en route and traffic condition change. So provide change information for those time, time sensitive service based on what happens on how the time is passing and uh, how the context is changing. Mm -hmm. uh, provide suggestion to the user based on their immediate context. In a complete application, display suggestion when, whenever the user is typing. So if, it, if you don't have a model for suggesting something, just suggest something because it's expected that the autocomplete should suggest something. Mm -hmm. uh, Indicate whether there is a new functionality available in the product. Uh, in the news feed, indicate there are new photos or video available, or new ways to access that, that media that previously were not. So give transparency in time, in time sensitive uh, contest. But obviously, don't send notification over contest. Don't overburden the user with irrelevant information. And don't leave out important information. So time services based on context. As I said yesterday, some of these guidelines can be applied everywhere and other maybe not like this one and time services based on context. If you don't have anything that is time related, uh, probably these guidelines can, cannot really apply. Uh, during interaction, show contextually relevant information. So display information that are relevant to the user current task and environment. So like display relevant information promin prominently uh, and, and those that are not relevant, maybe the next page or smaller. Um, if the contest change, change the view in activity tracker, uh, the contest is different when it's moving and when it's static. So maybe also the visualization can change if the user is running or if the user is static. So provide uh, relevant information as the contest change. Uh, during interaction, match relevant social norm. And so the experience is it's, these, these two are connected to the um, designing for diversity that we, we spoke about uh, a few weeks ago. Um, so match relevant social norm, ensure the experience is delivered in a way that user would expect, given the social and cultural context. So recognize factors that are important to user. Uh, for example, and, and this is uh, a, a, a realistic example. A photo organizer app that recognizes animals as well as people acknowledge that pets can be family to some user. Uh, vice versa, mapping a person like uh, saying that a person is an animal could be not really uh, a nice thing to do. Uh, Adjust experience based on current and current condition. Again, similar to before. 
from don't give in a puppet recommendation. Um, so don't recommend in a pit and stake application the user to stand up when they are in the middle of a meeting, or if you're, I don't know if you have any, any fitness tracker, but uh, typically fitness tracker, when you drive at a certain point say, okay, it's time to stand up, but I'm driving, I cannot stand up and, and have one minute's walk because you, you told me. So uh, they should understand the context and social norm that you cannot stand up while driving or in the middle of a meeting or while you're doing some activity to are seated uh, or not. Etc. Mitigate social biases. So this is during the interaction, the normal interaction with the system. Ensure that the system language and behavior do not reinforce undesirable and unfair stereotype and biases. And we have seen yesterday the example of the keyboard of Google that uh, of Android that suggests either uh, both uh, him and her when you type the H. So include gender representation in language and present unbiased search and filter results. Then other five guidelines uh, when the system is wrong. When the system is wrong, support efficient invocation. Make it easy to invoke or request the system service when needed. So clarify if the system is invoked, provide a mechanism for invoking the system outside of the typical flow of the application, allow fine tuning the invocation uh, and so on. Uh, the next two are related to these support efficient dismissal, make it easy to dismiss, ignore undesired AI system service, similar to the Alexa stop that we uh, tested yesterday. It's an efficient way to say, please stop. I'm not interested. Don't continue to generate answer for the next 15 minutes. Stop, it's enough. Uh, so efficient dismissal, efficient cor correction, make it easy to edit, refine, recover when the system is wrong. Uh, we have seen yesterday the example of uh, auto completion uh, in um, in search when you or uh, typos in search when the user types Kenyo Reeves with R E I A uh, etc and not the actor with a different name and the system would like to auto correct with the name of the actor um, and in in this case Google Bing and all the others have a quick link to say I. I it's not a mistake. I want to search for this other name. Don't correct me. This is not an error. Mm -hmm. So support efficient correction with just one click. You have a correction of the entire search functionality. Uh, scope services when in doubt. Engage in this, ambigu in this ambiguation or great gracefully degrade your system service when uncertainty about a user goal. Mm -hmm. So if you don't know exactly what to suggest, instead of suggesting one only things because that is maybe a low precision, just suggest multiple options. So degrading the performance, if you, if you don't have the right answer, let's say degrade the performance a bit and enlarge the possibility. Uh, allow user to select between option. If there is not really a preference, a strong preference, okay, this route is 10 minutes, this other is 11, this other is nine, present all the three options and let the user choose according to some parameter, not say the only road is this one that lasts 10 minutes to give option. So rely on user when in doubt or when you don't have a clear winner in your prediction, in your recommendation. And when wrong, make clear why the system did what it did. This is mapped with initially, make clear what the system can do. But when it's wrong, and so it's expected that something that is happening is something that uh, can do the system, make clear why the system behave in this way. For instance, provide in the recommendation a button, why recommended button, to show, to explain why that recommendation was presenting in that way and why that road was selecting as the best road to make. Because maybe you have free toll or it's uh, less traffic or uh, there is no accident or any other option, but give explanation if you have explanation why the system behave in that way. A way to, for the user that wants to understand better to understand better. And then over time, other seven um, guidelines. Remember recent interaction. So maintain a sort of short-term memory 
and allow the user to make efficient or a reference to that memory. For instance, in a navigation product, just have the list of the recent destination in a car so that one can select this or favorite, for instance. Uh, learn from the user behavior. So personalize over time the user experience by learning uh, what the user is doing. So use previous inputs to generate new recommendation, refine the music recommendation according to uh, the liked music or the unliked music or the listened music and so on over time. But update and adapt cautiously. So learn, but update with care. Limit disruptive changes when updating and adapting the AI system behavior. So modify results gradually according to new input. Not present today a, a list of 10 songs and tomorrow a totally different list of 10 songs. Because otherwise it may seem that you are wrong and I would like to understand why you did this choice. So if you update with care, uh, slower, it should be uh, easier for, for the user to understand what's happening because it, it has some elements that are familiar with respect to previous week and other elements that are less familiar. Encourage granular feedback. So enable the user to provide feedback. So the like button, the dislike button on the song, the upvote, the downvote, the I'm not interested in these uh, for the advertiser that you may find somewhere and so on. Uh, we have seen this yesterday, convey this consequence of the action. Immediately say this action will change the recommendation that we are going to see, uh, that I'm going to produce for you in the next week and the next time over time. So convey the consequence of the user action. Because as, as I said yesterday, some of these may be immediate, like for the traditional non-AI system, other uh, will instead have a consequence over time, not immediately after the action. Uh, provide global control. So allow the user to globally customize how the, what the, the system monitor and how it behave. So enable or disable inputs, uh, location history in a photo application uh, or I don't know, uh, allow the user to specify whether they, they want to avoid highway, tolls, or major intersection, or to prefer street with less traffic, with more traffic, uh, and so on. But don't allow control too broad. Don't disable at all the spamming filter, for instance. So if you are providing a useful service, maybe degraded service, one of the of the thing that we have said before, but providing global control, but not too much global control. Because otherwise the, the benefit of having the AI is totally missed. And finally, notify users about change. Inform the user over time when the AI system adds or updates capability. Ah, this is something new that I'm able to do. Ah, from today, you don't only have the favorite recommendation about music, but also you will have the high rotation uh, music or the relaxing music uh, playlist uh, according to your preferences or other things. Uh, provide user with information about updates or to privacy or legal regulation. This is something probably normative as well. Um, and provide information within the application that teaches the user about the new feature and capability. But don't obs obfuscate change in algorithm and model. So be explicit, be transparent. So, so some of these, well, I've read some of these, you can picture some um, principle that came from the course, error recovery, uh, transparency, uh, all the discussion about mental models, and so adapting uh, cautiously also it's a way for helping the user create a better mental model of the system that can change. So also the mental model should be updated uh, over time. So with this, let's try to, so this, this um, uh, spreadsheet is essentially the same uh, list of uh, guidelines 
split into four stages and with a new column that is voice assistant. So what I would like to do in this half an hour, at least starting, is with you, uh, trying to go through these 18 guidelines or uh, a subset of these, uh, maybe helping ourselves with, uh, with this, hmm, if we need, uh, and analyzing the Amazon Echo and the voice assistant that is including it according to these uh, guidelines. So let me increase zoom a little bit. So let, let's try. I, I'd like to do this uh, together so that I don't have to speak for another half an hour. Um, so guidelines number one. So initially, you have the Amazon Echo in front of you, never used before. The guidance say, make clear what the system can do. And the description say, help the user understand what the AI system is capable of doing. So the voice assistant, first question. The voice assistant, uh, this guideline can be applied to the voice assistant or, or not. So it can be applied or not. And the second question is, uh, the Alexa violate the guidelines or respect the guidelines? So yes, could be applied and violate the guidelines partially, totally, or, or it's fulfilled perfectly the guideline. Make clear what the system can do. So, okay, uh, we, we had a, a, a few answers. Uh, so we have a, uh, is there a tutorial at the beginning? Otherwise the user cannot know. Uh, uh, partially are by guessing and uh, yes, uh, it respects the guidelines since you are forced to install the application and it's all explained. Uh, so I, I would say that is partially respect. Uh, because yes, there is some piece of paper, uh, like a tutorial, and there is the app that explain the main feature so that you have to say the wake word and then you can ask some of the thing. And then um, Amazon, if you don't uh, deselect uh, this option, send you a newsletter every week uh, telling you, ah, you can try to say this and see what happens. Uh, but it's not totally clear uh, to me, in my opinion, what the system can do. Mo some of the things, most of the things, the basic things can do. Other things, uh, you learn that the system cannot do this uh, during the interaction, so not initially. So you learn that, um, uh, for instance, the uh, television, uh, you know, you can know things for tonight, but not tomorrow, uh, or you can ask uh, the age of a uh, actor uh, and you, you get an answer. But if you ask the age or a uh, different, maybe public uh, person, you don't have the action. So it's not totally, not always clear what the system can do, but partially respect uh, this since you know that you can speak with this and that you should uh, receive uh, an answer. So let's not write, uh, let's just put uh, uh, a color like yellow for partially uh, orange, this way. Uh, but yes, more or less, so let's let's say more green than the yellow. The, so it's, it's clear what the system can do, more or less, yes. Uh, not in 100% of the case. Uh, and say it's also a case of recalling the commands that are recognizing them. Yes, this is a problem with all the voice assistant. So for voice assistant, you have to uh, recall things, not recognizing because you don't have a graphical user interface. So you have to remember what to say and how to say. But 
make clear what the system can do. Let's say that we can, it could be partially, but we can from partially to yes. Uh, because as Carlos said, there is uh, an application, there is information, there is the newsletter. Uh, and so you, you have information. Make clear how well the system can do what it can do. Respect, partially, not respect. So the first guidelines say, make clear what the system can do, not how well it can do. So technically not so much, this is not stated during the answer or anything anywhere else. You infer it by bad statistic not respect. Any other, maybe with a direct experience with these kind of things? Uh, uh, in the chat to say, uh, it's clear because usually the system give an answer for all the question, but this is not uh, the guideline. So uh, giving an answer for all the question could be make clear what the system can do probably. Uh, in the sense that you speak and you receive an answer for all the question, most, most of the question. And so it's clear what this can do because you speak and the other answer, and in case you get an answer. But how well the system can do that, you initially, you don't know. You don't know if, if I can ask these and receive a 100% accurate answer or no answer at all, or a totally wrong answer initially, it's not clear. Maybe during interaction is clear because I remember, I recall what you can say and I recall what uh, uh, I, the, the device, the system answer. So for this, let's say that the, the first one is 90% uh, respect. For this, I would say that is 90% not respected because initially it's not clear how well the system can answer all the possible questions. So in this case, the, the voice of system initially, then you can learn, but it's not initially. So let's say 90% yes, 90% no. Um, and how we can, how can fix this is obviously problematic for voice assistant, because if you don't have a screen, you, can, you have to rely to something else. So, so the learning, the recalls, the make clear what the system can do and how well it can do is more problematic if you just have limited to voice and don't have a screen or don't have multimodality or don't have other things. So Amazon, for instance, relies on newsletter, on the application, on notification to inform the user, to make clear what the system can do. Uh, how well the system, it depends. Also depends because this platform has, uh, could have extension so like the Giallo Zafferano extension that worked yes, uh, that we have seen yesterday briefly. Uh, so these are developers that add things in the system. And so impact also how well the system can do what it can do. So it's a, it's a, a more complex ecosystem and not a single maybe feature of recommending music. Uh, third guideline, time services based on context. So the description is time when to act or interrupt based on the user's current task and environment. Just to remind you, the example is update the time to destination navigation or in you know, order to complete the display suggestion whenever the user is typing, uh, indicate there are new photos or video available, but don't overburden the user with irrelevant information, don't leave out important information. 
applicable or not. So we have uh, one that say not applicable. Since the environment is usually fixed and it answers the question from the user. So it never starts a conversation. And this is, this is true. This is another characteristic of voice assistant. They never start a conversation. You have to start a conversation. Um, and then we have, you have to say stop, Alexa, stop. Uh, so it's not respect. Um, any other ideas? We have a not respect and don't apply. Uh, applicable only for information about the new functionality, newsletter with what's new. So let's see if we have another. Maybe not. So here I, I would say that is largely not applicable because it's true that uh, you have to say stop, but you have to say stop uh, no one. Uh, it's not something that the device, the voice assistant interrupt you. And you have to say stop because it's too, because the interruption is, is unwanted is uh, the answer to your question that will be too long. You are just interested in the first bit of information. So you interrupt the, you interrupt the, the system, but it's not a time-based, uh, time-sensitive uh, context. Uh, the things about newsletter um, uh, notification could, could apply uh, the, here, uh, but again, it's not something uh, time-sensitive. is not uh, is not uh, during time when to act or interrupt based on the user current task. It's not something that happens because the newsletter arrives via email. So like any other emails, it's not something that is contextual to the um, during the interaction. Like this thing here, update time, how to complete application display suggestion and so on. So I think that we can mark this as not applicable and just to, I think that this is the right file. Just to give you an idea, no, this is not the right file. Well, uh, so for instance, this is uh, the, uh, the appendix of the paper in which they present, in which Microsoft presents the, this device and they have some example uh, of application. Uh, so for instance, for guidelines number one, that we say we applied, uh, during in the paper, uh, they say that uh, it apply, but it violates mostly uh, because when the assistant was involved verbally, I was not given any indication of what commands I could request. So this is about voice assistants, not probably a single device, but something on the on the smartphone. And so this is uh, along the line of our probably not not totally uh, apply not totally um, so it's applicable but not totally respect because again I wasn't giving any indication of the command so what the system clear I will mark it mostly and so the guideline two let's say if there is I said from high, how can I help the product does not promise anything more no expectation of quality sets appliances uh, we, we agree with this, this, this set of people that uh, decide this. In the third, the time services, let's see if we, we have a voice assistant, there's a violation. So it, it apply in this voice assistant because there is no indication of when the system will actually remind you 
of the set reminder. So just confirm that the reminder has been uh, set. So in this case, for, for Alexa, you have no indication. So you have no indication because you don't have a reminder actually uh, about anything just when the timer expires. So it could be probably not applying even if it's a uh, violation here. Uh, but again, it depends on which voice assistant they were analyzing. We are thinking about the hardware device. Maybe they are just thinking about the, the software or in, not in a mobile, but in a, in a computer or something like that. And these are, are some example. And uh, another thing that I would like to show you, because I think it could be interesting is, uh, Um, is that in the actual paper, so if you want, you can also compare with the results of the actual paper, uh, and then we will continue for a bit. Uh, there are, well, some example, do you see heuristic evaluation and uh, user study, and they had five participants uh, using the voice assistant for a specific task, creating a reminder with a due date. Mm -hmm. Not the general usage like we are imagining now, but with this, in the first version of the guidelines, uh, they found these are the, um, every time that the, the voice assistant apply with the, the guidelines, and these are the violations. So for instance, the guidelines too, it's, it that it it's all according to all the five users the four users uh, doesn't uh, uh, respect the the guidelines but violates uh, the guidelines every time and also here you don't have anything here you have three users so probably most of them agree that apply and respect uh, the guidelines and so on and and here where it does not apply. So for, for some people, you see, there is also variety here. So out of five people, uh, four say that, uh, let's take these four say that the guidelines number two apply, it is violated. And one say that guideline number two is, does not apply. So there is not, not a real answer. Then they refine a little bit the guidelines uh, and also had a expert evaluation of this that is written here expert evaluation of revisions um, of the guidelines, including also virtual assistants. Um, but they are guidelines you can try to apply and reason about it in the evaluation, especially reason about them during the design phase, trying to apply them if needed in the best way that possible. Just to give you a, a hint that if you want to have a different perspective, you can also have a look at this and this paper or the example that are in the appendix of this of this paper. Um, going back here, during interaction. So show contextually relevant information. Display information relevant to the user, current task and environment. And here they say, do display relevant recommendation prominently, show information that is relevant to the user context. Uh, maintain a uniform view when the content, okay. Uh, show uniform that is relevant to user context. For example, in a movie search, uh, show time for the movie that are playing close to user location or uh, on uh, or around the day of the search. Or remember when the user parked the car and wrote them back to their car the next time they open the application. So show context or relevant information. Not totally applicable in the chat since it doesn't prompt information by itself. I mean, the fact that is answer based on your location can be considered a contextually relevant like the weather record. So we have a partially not applicable also in this case. Any other? Yes, I'm sharing in the chat the link to the PDF of the paper. But you can also uh, look at the guidelines for human AI interaction 
and on Google and micro, Microsoft guidelines for human AI interaction. We will see this paper and in the digital library of DCM and other places. Uh, so here, show contextually relevant information. So I, I show you some contextually relevant information probably, but I want to distract you too much pro from this later. Uh, so I, pro I probably partially applied this, violated this guideline. So let's say that doesn't apply as well because it, or let's say oh, if it doesn't apply or if it's apply, it's a strong violation because we are not able to think about uh, a moment in which um, the, 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 the Alexa show information relevant to the user current task in, uh, in the environment. So here the question could be, it's better so if we need to think about, uh, if we give, should give a suggestion to the designers of uh, the Amazon Echo. Mm -hmm. For this, it's better if, they, if we say to them, this doesn't apply and don't care, or if say, these probably don't apply right now, but it should, and do this. So it could be important to show to, to not show because it doesn't, doesn't have a screen, but to report or to augment the answer with contextually relevant information or not. No opinions. Maybe it would be too much privacy invasive. Relevant information. Not all the information. And probably when you accept to have one of these things in in your house, you you already accept to have some intrusion in privacy. But yeah, let's say that this could be something that one, one person should, should could reflect either say, okay, it doesn't apply and it's fine, it doesn't apply or uh, it doesn't apply and it should. And it should for some cases, for instance, for, so for instance, for the time services based on context, this doesn't apply, we have said, but uh, for instance, for timer could be nice if sometime we have a reminder that I don't know, be optional, uh, an optional reminder to know that is in a five minute timer, it lasted one minute, two minutes and, and so on. So a sort of very sparse countdown to the five minutes uh, timer. So some additional information like you still have two minutes, maybe optional, maybe when you set the timer, the answer could be yes, I set the timer. Do you want to be reminded at after, after of the time? And you can say yes or no. Uh, or do you want some reminder uh, or not? And something like this. So let's keep a, a, a few of these and let's go here. Uh, guidance seven, support efficient invocation. Make it easy to invoke or request the AI system service when needed. This should be really easy. Apply or don't apply and respect or don't respect. Yeah, this is really easy because yes, it's uh, obviously support efficient invocation. You can just call uh, Alexa and that it started. So it, it's really easy. And then the, it's not the right green, but okay. Well, uh, support efficient dismissal. Perfect, same, obviously, yes, you can say stop, for instance. So it's it's easy to dismiss or ignore. You can just stop listening or just say stop or make another question. So it's it's really trivial 
to do this. Uh, support efficient correction. Mm. So not so much, so and so partial, I have to say the entire phrase again. For the timer, you have to delete it and create another one, yes. It's easy to do, but it's not immediate. Uh, partial, it, it doesn't say immediate or easy, it say efficient correction. Make it, make it easy to edit to refine or recover. Um, I would be more, um, more negative than you. You say partial and say it doesn't respect because I, actually there is no easy way to efficient and easy way. Yes, it's not so easy to implement some specific question if it doesn't send our answer. Uh, and it has a problem with those with the comments. Yes, it's a problem linked to natural language. So it's not easy to do in practice, uh, but it's not, let's say, we are just trying to evaluate these. So it's not our business how hard it is to do this. So if we want to, to be nice, uh, if we want uh, uh, to be nice, uh, we can say that is partial evaluation, but it's it's violate these and it shouldn't and say, say that is if i say turn on a lamp or set a timer of five minutes uh, there is no uh efficient way to edit there is no way to edit that i have to say another command that is del delete the timer or turn off the, the, the light if i don't uh, meant that uh, similarly there is no way to refine uh, or recover, I can go back to the previous stage, but it's not the process of editing, refining, or recover. So if I set a timer, I can say, uh, set a timer of five minutes. I can say, no, no, four. So if, you, if we are speaking, I say, okay, uh, you have five minutes or no, four, and you get this four and replace four in your mind with five, and vice versa. You replace five in your mind with four. So we still have five minutes or no, we have five, four minutes left. Uh, and you can re 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 think about it or uh, please turn on the light or no, wait. We can in natural language immediately stop another person and edit our sentence because we can say, oh no, or wait, or something that say edit the previous sentence. Uh, with these devices, this is not uh, possible. Maybe it's also technically really difficult to do, but it's not, not possible. So it's not easy to, to edit, or refine, or recover, and not efficient. So to again, to, to, the, to, to change the timer, I have to stop the timer, delete the timer, and then uh, go back and create a new timer. If I turn on the, the, the wrong lamp, uh, I need to turn off that lamp and turn on the right lamp. So I, I have to redo the operation. So I would say that this is a partial violation or strong violation, let's call it and anyway, but it's a violation. Uh, that it, it could be nice if it could be solved, uh, but it's totally applicable and maybe it's difficult to solve, but it, it should be, it could be nice to, to solve this. Uh, so for instance, uh, it's not the case of this, but when you have a screen, like in Google Assistant or in Siri, and you can type also, you can edit the sentence. So I generate a new set of answer from the same question. And so in that case, but it's not this kind of voice assistant, it support an efficient, we support better and efficient correction. Um, one more, and then we can stop here. Uh, This one, notify users about changes. Do you think that Alexa notify users about uh, updates to their own system? New capability, new sentence that is support or that it should? Mm. 
Okay, we have a no, it should, probably not so much since the newsletter is optional. Uh, sometimes she tell us about some skill changes. Yes, and this is, again, this is a, a violation. I, I never seen any pop-up in the app, probably it could, could have been. So, but this is again, a violation because there is no notification, not sensible notification of changes. So if, if Alexa learn, um, so for what happens, uh, what happened a few months ago. So for instance, they added support from uh, for Apple Music. Uh, initially, you don't have support for Apple Music, and then they added support for Apple Music. And you, you do, probably in the newsletter is written, but the newsletter happens one, once per week, and you also have other things in the newsletter. And so you, you don't know this, you don't have a, a, a notification about the change. Uh, and also, uh, a few months ago, I think, they changed how the um, the television, I think that the program of the television are reported a slightly different way. Uh, how, how, how do you change page between the, the programs, uh, the list of programs, and you you weren't notified. The first time you, you say that sentence, you just receive, um, you just know, you are informed in that moment that to, um, to proceed to another page, you have to say something. And this something is, is different from this, the thing that you have said up to that moment. So you, what you are called to say, but there's not a sensible notification about we have a new feature or you can say something this. Um, and this week there has been an outrage, a new sidewalk function. I don't know, I don't know what is this sidewalk function they automatically enabled. So in case of outrage, maybe also notify users that something is not really uh, working. I don't know, all, all this, this time, all this thing. etc. So we did this just a, a brief look how we can you know, map these and reflect on this thing according to these uh, guidelines. So we are more or less on the same page and so this is a procedure that you can do for designing. So, okay, is my system, in my system that I'm going to develop here, the system uh, A, B, C, uh, in my system is it clear what the system can do? Yes, no, and how can put this here? Is, is it clear how well the system can do if this is my system? So this could be used for, as a guideline for designing things and also for evaluating things of others or, or, or your product. And in this paper, for instance, they tried, they evaluate the, the guidelines with uh, uh, recommendation in uh, e-commerce like say Amazon, route planning in a uh, navigation, the recommendation for music, uh, activity tracker, walking detection, a step count, uh, how to complete on mobile keyboard, uh, feed filtering on social network, importance filtering on email, voice assistant, as we said before, uh, album suggestion of photo organizer and search in group search, so specific. And so these are just one feature of spe a specific product because sometimes you just have one feature uh, in a artificial intelligence system. You don't have the entire system that is baked on artificial intelligence um, capability. In the, in the case of the voice, we can say that the artificial intelligence is also in the natural language processing, so we can extend this a little bit. But for a graphical user interface, you probably have to focus on some specific feature of this, and you can uh, analyze these according to these guidelines. Or also, again, when you design something, you can consider the guidelines as any other guidelines that we have seen up to this moment uh, for designing new things that is more respectful of human AI interaction and more suitable for interacting uh, with the AI system from a point of view of transparency of mental models on recovering errors and so on. Okay, so it's actually is 1 p.m. So we can stop here. This also closed the, the lecture about interacting with AI. That was just a short overview on some topics and these guidelines. Next week on Wednesday, we will start speaking about 
evaluation, in particular, uh, usability testing, how to conduct, what is, uh, how to recruit users, etc. And then you can also apply this thing to your prototype and to milestone number four. So if you have any questions, please write them in the chat. I'm start stopping the recording and uh, the registration. If you don't have any question, if you don't have a question, uh, we can meet tomorrow in the lab.